Well, it's like it's a scientific fact. Research shows it has been proven. I thrown around super casually these days. For example, take a look at these guys. Ian has now returned to Biloela with Gorav to corroborate his psychic intuition with scientific evidence. On the borders of India and Pakistan in the late 1940s and early 1950s, what they found in these cities, Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, Kotiji, was archaeological evidence to show there were apparently atomic weapons. Only it happened in ancient times. Several new studies show that people who run more than 20 miles a week or people who run at an average pace that's faster than 7.5 miles per hour are actually more likely to live shorter lifespans. There's always a counter study, and one of those studies that took a look at about 4,000 runners found no evidence that high mileage runners are any worse off medically. This technology was also in ancient times too. And it's the same technology that was used in the Vimanas. Quran is the only religious scripture on the face of the earth which will pass the test of science. And is this image proof the Apollo 11 astronauts encountered aliens before the first moonwalk? And it has these intervals of evenly spaced compartments. When aliens on the moon, the truth exposed continues. Whoa! Some of that stuff looks genuinely convincing, doesn't it? Aliens on the moon, ghosts leaving magnetic traces, ancient science which was better than current science. This video, let's clean some of the clutter around. Scientific fact versus bullshit. Good research versus bad research. It has been proven versus fuck no, it has not been proven. Okay, firstly, my mission in this video is not to criticize any religion or any belief that's out there. Uh, I'm all... all the <coughs> I'm all the separate science from stuff that is not science. First, let's deal with what the hell is science. The intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systemic study of the structure and behavior of the natural and physical world through observation and experiment. Or in other words, science refers to a system of acquiring knowledge. The system uses observation and experimentation to describe and explain natural phenomena. The term science also refers to the body of knowledge people have gained using that system. The scientific method is a step-by-step -step way to solve problems and answer questions logically. And it turns out some of the best musicians of our generation have composed some timeless classics about this very scientific method. Who would have thought? Observation, ask a question, form a hypothesis and make a prediction, do a test or experimentation, analyze data and draw a conclusion. Make I'm gonna do some science. Only got science in my pocket. I'm just a scientist. Awesome. From a hypothesis, an educated guess. Conduct an experiment to put it to the test. We use the scientific method to conduct our experiments. Oh man, what could be more pathetic than a grown up bearded man acting stupid and making YouTube videos about science, huh? Oh wait. Observation, research, hypothesis, experiment, and reaching a conclusion are the major ingredients of the scientific method. In the description below, you will find links to some awesome videos which explain these words and the method in more detail. And now I present to you the Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman explaining things in ways only he could. In general, we look for new law by the following process. First, we guess it. <laughs> then we... Com well, don't laugh, that's the really true. Then we compute the consequences of the guess to see what, if this is right, if this law that we guessed is right, we see what it would imply. And then we compare those computation results to nature. Or we say compare to experiment or experience. Compare it directly with observation to see if it, if it works. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. In that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make any difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make any difference how smart you are who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. 
a tolerance to it. Now the one big distinction between science and everything else is that science is always looking for holes within its own theories and laws and facts. Nothing in science is beyond critique and everything can potentially be disproved. First, the theory is then right? No, it is simply not proved wrong. Because in the future, there could be a wider range of experiments, you could compute a wider range of, co of consequences, and you may discover then that the thing is wrong. The theory had been failed to be proved wrong and could be taken to be temporarily right, but it can never be proved right because tomorrow's experiment may succeed in proving what you thought was right wrong. Science is built on the foundation of criticism. That unpicking dodgy claims, unpicking the evidence behind dodgy claims, isn't uh, a kind of nasty carping activity. It's socially useful, but it's also a kind of uh, an, an extremely valuable uh, explanatory tool, because real science is all about critically appraising the evidence for somebody else's position. That's what happens in academic journals. That's what happens uh, at academic conferences. The Q&A session after a postdoc presents data is often a a bloodbath, and nobody minds that. We actively welcome it. It's like a kind of consenting intellectual SM activity. Yes, science! To get a better understanding of how to separate good research from bad research, I would recommend a book called Bad Science by Ben Goldack. He also has an amazing TED talk, the link to which is in the description below. So, does the scientific method give us all the answers in the universe? Of course it doesn't. Everything that cannot be proven using the scientific method is bogus? Of course not. I had a conversation about flying saucers some years ago with laymen. Because <laughs> I'm scientific, I know all about flying saucers. So I said, I don't think there are flying saucers. So the other, my antagonist said, is it impossible that there are flying saucers? Can you prove that it's impossible? I said, no, I can't prove it's impossible. It's just very unlikely. That, they say, you are very unscientific. If you can't prove it impossible, then why, how can you say it's likely that it's unlikely? Well, that's the way, that is scientific. It is scientific only to say what's more likely and less likely and not to be proving all the time possible and impossible. To define what I mean, I finally said to him, listen, I mean that from my knowledge of the world that I see around me, I think that it is much more likely that the reports of flying saucers are the result of the known irrational characteristics of terrestrial intelligence <laughs> rather than the unknown <laughs> rational efforts of extraterrestrial intelligence. <laughs> it's just more likely, that's all. And it's a good guess. And we always try to guess the most likely explanation, keeping in the back of the mind the fact that if it doesn't work, then we must discuss the other possibilities. While a theory not backed by science isn't necessarily bullshit, it is critical that we do not let people fool us into believing that it is actual science. Science is all around us. It's in us. Knowledge of science is power. It gives you an understanding of the forces of nature, which some people will exploit your ignorance of it if you don't know it. Hey. I got some crystals here. If you rub them together, they'll heal you. Ah, oh, you might say, well, what are the crystals made of? What, what, what diseases do they cure? Where did you get them? It's not even about how much science you know. It's about how science literate you are. Science literacy is brain wiring. It's what's your first thought when someone tells you something? Are you in a position to know whether they're just full of it? Or are you positioned to say, hey, That'll work, and I know why. Believing that ghosts exist, and that aliens have visited Earth, and that there were ancient civilizations scientifically much more advanced than us, on the basis of some random dude on History Channel telling you so, is a lot of things, but it is not scientific thinking. Science is more than a body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptically interrogating the universe with a fine understanding of human fallibility. If, if we are not able to ask skeptical questions, to interrogate those who tell us mm -hmm. that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we're up for grabs for the next charlatan, political or religious who comes ambling along. True science is backed by actual experiments and observations. It is always looking to disprove its own theories. It is always open to criticism. It is always open to change in light of new evidence. 
No, it does not have all the answers. And yes, it is a way of thinking which could lead us to those answers. Titanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor. Carry the two, changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Fuck you, science! Check out more videos. Like this one. Subscribe. Bye-bye.